We go to uh, Sushi by Scratch, which is a restaurant my friend Philip Franklin Lee opened up out here that he serves Kobe and they they lightly sear it. And then it's, there's a whole process, you know, that he does and puts it on a piece of uh, of rice, you know, like like sushi. Mm. And it's you see, watch him cut this Kobe and it's just the whole thing's fat. It's just like... A little bit of meat, a little bit of fat, a little bit of meat, a little bit of fat. Like the whole thing is like, it's a pink. It's buttery. Yeah, buttery. It's just all, like it melts in your mouth when you put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It coats the inside of your throat. You feel it. And it has so much flavor and you just, you just need a little bit. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you eat too much, you just get, you're going to feel sick. Yeah. Because it's so fatty. You'll feel very full, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but American Wagyu, so that's just, what is that? It's an inbreed or, my, or excuse my, me, a crossbreed? Yeah, my my understanding is that it's a a, a crossbreed between mm. some whatever DNA that they were okay. I spoke to, gosh, where were we? Alabama or somewhere in the south. This guy had Wagyu, and that was his big selling point for his restaurant. But when I saw it, I was like, it was nothing like that Wagyu. Right. It's very... And I was like, how is this Wagyu? And uh, he's like, well, it's it's American Wagyu. And he he, I just remember him saying. In the USA, you're never going to find the same stuff you get in Japan, and they're never going to let those genetics leave that country because mm. how how would that be in their favor? Right to have someone here mass producing um, that delicious, sought after, coveted meat around mm. the world. Yeah, it makes sense. They would want to covet that. They've got the market pinned on. That. Have you gone to Italy and had Bistecca Florentine? <clears throat> no, I've not been to Italy yet. Really? And I've not done Europe very much at all. Just this year, I went to France and Spain and Portugal. And the Faroe Islands <clears throat> for the first time. That's interesting. I would think Italy is a place I would want if I was like reviewing food. You know, my heart is in Asia. I love Asian food so much. I I lived since age 24. I'm 38 now. I lived in Korea eight years. Um, I, I moved to Vietnam about seven years ago. Uh, so I've lived there a long time. I love Asian food, and I find Asian food to be the most interesting to film and and mm. to eat in general. And then now. We're trying to do a better job of getting around the world. We plan to go to South America this year. And, and like I said, we just started in Europe. And I want to go to those places in the future and, and try to, you know, film what people haven't filmed a thousand times before. I think that's mm. the, the main challenge in Europe is, okay, pizza, like the, the, the classic foods. How do we cover this place and not just film what everyone's filmed a million times before? I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, as far as exotic foods, I would imagine Asia would be the place to go. Yeah. So Bisteca Florentine is apparently from a very old cow. It's like a, it's a cow, not a bull. It's not a steer, like a lot of the steak that we get here in America. And they have a very specific way of cooking like a, a porterhouse steak, a very thick steak. It's always over wood. They always cook it over wood. They like to cook it over different kinds of wood. Like there's a bunch of people that have like different theories. Like olive wood is one of them that they really like, and mm -hmm. they add leaves to it to make it smoky. But I went down a rabbit hole of watching all these different people. What's that guy's name? Stanley Tucci. That guy. He goes to. Italy. Oh right. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, On Netflix, maybe. It's uh, yeah. made from a young steer. Is it? That's no, what it's is aged. it? Oh, it's aged. But didn't someone say that it was from an old beef cow? Who was here recently that was talking to us about that? I remember hearing about it recently. But yeah, it was uh, who was here that was talking to us about food recently? Um, the spinal cord into the band. Uh, hmm. I band. talked to oh, too yeah. many There's people. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to like. <laughs> My my hard drives overflowed yeah, with information, understood. but this uh, particular type of steak, like they cook it fairly rare, and um, they they do it, you know, like uh, like I said, it's always over embers, and you know they have those grills with like an Argentine style grill it raises up and lowers, so they just get the perfect mm. amount of temperature on the steak and and sear it. But it's it's a tradition. So you tried it in Italy. I have tried steak in Italy, and I've I've tried bistecca Florentine in Italy, but I don't know if it's from the correct cow. And the, like, there was a place we went in Florence that was like a legendary steakhouse mm -hmm. that was pretty amazing, and it's the the meat is different because it's all grass fed. Mm -hmm. They do not have American corn fed fatty beef over there. Their beef is essentially like the way a cow would normally be if that cow was just free ranging right. and and you know grazing on grass mm -hmm. but it's very tender and they they cook it very rare 
it's like kind of seared on the outside, but the the inside is pretty red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can eat raw that you might mm -hmm. not expect. It's, it, yeah. You find out really when you go to Japan, and um, yeah, so steak. I mean, obviously steak tartare is, sure. is everywhere now. But even when I was in Japan, they served raw horse Whoa. over rice. So raw horse nigiri, and uh, and it's when delicious. you have raw horse, is it just very thinly sliced? Do they yeah. brine Thin it? Do they do anything to it? Nothing. 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 And that's that's what they do with uh, so much different food. We did a whole raw food episode there, and I mean, you're familiar with all the typical sushi stuff, but we even had raw shark heart. Whoa. As well, which. They have to wash it for hours because it has a really strong, potent ammonia smell to it. Mm. But um, the horse was delicious, but it's small. Again, everything's like a little bite size. You just put it in your hand, give it a little bit of a dip in the soy sauce, and then delicious. 